you cannot be a spectator. You follow me, but you should not practice your life of faith centered on me. You have to practice it centered on yourself. So you must preserve your way of life, uh, your way of faith, irrespective of what others do. A life of faith centered on heaven is a life of gratitude and contentment in the deepest sphere of the heart, unlike any experience you may have with a person who is close to you. Our life of faith should be such that, no matter how evil the world may be, we can look at heaven and earth and say, I am grateful, I am happy. If we cannot feel this way, then in this sad circumstance, we must determine ourselves anew and pray, I am a sinner, please grant me the courage I lack. I just caught sight of our new little baby in the back. The Benitos, great. Okay, next. In the game of life, there are two ways of living. On the court or in the stands. When we're in the stands, watching life from afar, we're often watching our life in an instant replay, moment by moment. We have no say in how the game of life is played as we watch from a distance. And we can only react to how life is being played out before us. How many of you like to watch sports? Right? It's one thing to watch sports. But on the other hand, when we're in the game of life, however, entrenched in the experience, moment by moment, suddenly our world opens up to us in real time. We are in control to make decisions of how life will be played out for us. We call the shots in each moment as they come, not as a reaction after the fact. So based on these two descriptions, where would you rather be? On the court or in the stands? How many of you would rather be on the court? And how many of you would rather be in the stands? OK, thank you very much. That's all I have to say. <laughs> OK. It, but it is, essentially, OK? This is basically my main point. Do I want to say it? I'll say it. OK, even in this room, if you're standing, if you're sitting in the back, do you consider yourself on the court being a part of this experience? Or are you looking from afar, from the stands? Something to think about. OK, and I'll give you the opportunity to um, come on and join us over in the court side. Okay, if you feel so inspired. Okay, when we look at life from this perspective, it seems fairly obvious that life is a whole lot more fun and predictable when we are on the court, so to speak. Possibilities open up to us from this vantage point, and suddenly there is power there. Whereas, when we approach life from the sidelines, when we allow our circumstances to determine our emotional and our physical outcomes, when we simply react to every situation that comes our way, we are ultimately not in control. We have lost our power. So what I'm saying today is we need to let go of being reactive to our situations and relying on others to determine our faith, as True Father says. When our circumstances cause us to react in a predictable pattern of bitterness, anger, resentment, hopelessness, we've lost our power and we are a slave to our circumstances. One predictable reaction we have is to blame others when things don't go our way. So as you may remember from a previous sermon, I am a blamer. So ultimately, when things don't go very well in my house, 
Okay, the first person that comes belting out of my mouth is, Abe! Even if something happened in the kitchen and he's like three rooms away, I still find some way to come up with this convoluted reason as to why this happened, okay? Some way to justify why I can blame him for something, right? Who else has a tendency to do that? Okay, okay. It's, it's toxic, okay? And actually, it doesn't help when other people feed into that. So how many of you have, you know, gone to, a, you know, gone over to a girlfriend or a friend and been like, you know, oh, I just get so frustrated when such and such happens. And then they go, I know, I totally get you. <laughs> or, you know, you think you've got it bad. This is like my situation. Or, you know, everybody's got that problem, right? It's not helpful. It, and for me, I feel like it fuels the fire. It just justifies, um, you know, my thinking. So on a, on a personal level, okay, another huge example that I've experienced in my life for years and years was blaming my mom. And blaming her for this and for that, even for things that were like, didn't even relate to her. You know, like she, she lives in Massachusetts, so I live in Connecticut, but somehow there would always be something related, right? And I would add to this list, okay? Any chance that I got to further justify myself and my cause, okay? But do I love my mother? Yeah, absolutely. I love her completely. But at the same time, there was some sort of hurt there, somewhere, something happened, okay? And to cope, I didn't consult my mom, okay? But instead, I turned inward and I decided that I was gonna carry this feeling with me, okay? And I was gonna add to it. Any chance, you know, that I got that sort of like reinforced this feeling that I had just made it grow. So, do you think I was happy when I was in this state? Maybe I thought I was for a little while, right? But then, you know, you start to see that actually it, it influences other parts of your life. It, it's just not working, you know? Your relationship with other people starts to not really work, okay? Because you develop this tendency. I was completely miserable. But at the same time, in making her wrong, it made me right. It justified my anger about something from the past, and it put me in a position of being blameless, right? Because if you can blame someone else, then there's no blame on you, or at least I, that's how I thought, right? So why do we do this? Why do we take that road of misery and perpetuate it so much. Ultimately, it's because we don't realize where we come from. We don't realize who we are as God's children and that we are loved more than anything by a loving parent. Isn't it true in the Garden of Eden? If only Adam and Eve had consulted with their parent at the time of the fall, don't you think that all of those misunderstandings could have been resolved so quickly? Right? Don't you think so? Yeah. We have disconnected from the wellspring of love that God has waited for so long to pour out from within us. We have chosen to become onlookers in the stands of our lives because we are so afraid of really owning up to our life where we know that Heavenly Parent is waiting for us to be our true selves. So somewhere along the way, we decided, you know what, it's easier to live reacting to our lives rather than really living in them. 
but we have been deceived. We have no power when we are not in the game, not playing alongside with God. We are a slave to our circumstances, and God is crying out to us. So for me, I was wondering for a really long time, I see that I have this issue, I, I can't let it go. Because no matter how much I realize that, well, this is my issue, there was always still like this little pinky of a finger that was still pointing, you know, what? So for me, after I did the landmark forum, I realized where I wasn't being a true daughter for my mom, okay? I realized that she's been doing the best that she can be and I was allowing my own ego and self-centeredness to get in the way. So what did I do? I apologized. So I'm, I'm, I realized that it's one thing to have a perspective change, that's great. But also, if you don't actually make things right, if you don't actually take action upon them, right? It's, we all know the right thing, but if you don't actually act the right way, then you're not gonna change, right? You're not gonna have a transformative experience. So I, I thought, well, I'll just change my perspective on my mom. But actually, I needed to tell her, and I needed to apologize that I've been really horrible as a daughter. And actually, she was really surprised. I didn't know that you thought that about this situation. I didn't know that you felt that. So what did I get out of that experience? It opened up a whole new world for me after I did that. I realized that I lose out on life when I choose to blame others for my circumstances, and I lose out on relationships fundamentally. But when I choose to instead take full responsibility for what happens in my life, I'm inundated with new opportunities to move forward. So what is my relationship with my mom right now? I'm five years old again. I look at her with starry eyes. I am in awe of my mother. I'm no longer burdened by my past feelings and our relationship starts new every single day. And I can look for, I can look at things for what it is. You know, if, for instance, you know, she says something and then changes her mind, I don't suddenly think, oh my gosh, you know, it's all connected. I just look at it for what it is, and we can work on that and work together. So there's a story of a hotel manager, a hotel, hotel manager who was always blaming everyone for anything that went wrong in the hotel. So if something broke or a customer complained, she pointed at so-and-so as the cause, and the problem just perpetuated. She would place blame, and the problem would not get resolved. Finally, one day she realized, if I take responsibility for the situation, then I can actually do something about it. Okay? She gained power when she decided to own a difficult moment in gratitude, and she could move forward as a better person. So in conclusion, I actually wanted to leave you with a video clip. It's about six or seven minutes long, okay? And it comes from a Netflix show uh, called The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay, so it's a comedy. It's based on this girl's experience being held captive for 13 years by this deranged reverend. And she comes out and faces New York City. And the whole funny side, or the comedic side about it is that she still is such a naive girl, the same way that she was when she was kidnapped, because it was so long ago. Anyway, it's not the most principled I will give that disclaimer. It's like, it's a pop show, okay? But I really appreciated 
the end of the second season because in that show, she actually confronts her mother and she's able to get past, get through that experience. So um, she confronts her mother about her kidnapping experience and how she felt that it was a result of her mother's lack of parenting and support. Okay, so in the beginning of the show, uh, as an audience, we realize that she actually is blaming herself all the time for what happens to her. And the way that she copes is she is super, super nice to everyone. She like takes care of everybody else's problems except for her own because ultimately she feels responsible for when bad things happen. And then later, you know, as the show progresses, she starts to get in tune with this anger inside of herself and she realizes actually it's because of my mom. It's because she didn't, you know, really take care of me. That's why I got put in this situation. But then she, she can't find any happiness from that either. She can't find satisfaction from that either. And it's only when she realizes that blaming either herself or others won't change or erase the things that have happened in her life and that she needs to accept them for what they are. And this is what gives her power, power to make a new path for herself and also freedom, freedom to be an owner in her life and its possibilities. So. Um, there's a lot of symbolism also. I'm really into, you know, what's the symbolism behind things. And um, in the show, in the clip that I'm going to show you, the mother is really into roller coasters. And so the only way that the daughter can get to her is by going on a roller coaster together, which is very symbolic of our life, our relationships with people that we tend to have ups and downs with, you know? We have this ongoing sort of back and forth. And that's what happens in the beginning of the clip, okay? she's. She's shouting at her mother, and her mother is trying to justify herself. But then at the very end of it, um, is just, to me, and a really amazing moment, because she can, she can overcome these feelings. So yeah, please join me in watching the clip. So there's, there's symbolism also in her being able to tie her shoe, because she couldn't do it. and. It was sort of like, I think, symbolic of her being stuck in the past, and then she finally can. Um, anyway, what I appreciated the most about that clip was in a moment, how in a moment of really, of confrontation, you know, Kimmy had it all planned out, like exactly what she was going to say, like exactly, you know, why, you know, you're the one to blame, mom. Right, for how I had this miserable thing happen in my life. And we do that. I mean, how many of us don't do that? We plot or we plan or we think it through, you know, all the reasons why, you know, our relationship doesn't work and it's always the other person. Um, but she caught herself, and if you remember, if you caught that part, she said, I'm never going to be free. I'm never going to not be kidnapped. And in other words, she was holding herself captive to that whole experience. She kept holding on to that experience, and therefore, she couldn't let it go. So, um, you know, our parents are doing the best they can, and others around us that we may feel, you know, s difficult with. Everybody's trying to do the best they can, especially in a world where, you know, predominantly our culture is always saying, just live for yourself, right? We have to actively be thinking about being here, being present right now with God as our parent who it loves us so much and really wants us to live together as a family. Right? So let us be present to life as it unfolds together with God. Let us be owners and not bystanders to a total life 
of offering for the sake of others and for the sake of the world. Okay, please join me in prayer. Our dearest, most beloved Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, thank you so much for this wonderful morning to gather together with all the brothers and sisters here, your sons and daughters, so precious to you in each unique and special way. When we really think about, uh, when we even just try to get a little taste of the magnitude of our value to you in our lives, then we, we just can't help but feel grateful. And we can't help but want to get up again and just do our best. We really want to be the best children of yours. We really want to stand up and be true sons and daughters. And we have such an amazing example in our true parents who are constantly always striving for the sake of this world and for the sake of your providence. And we know that um, as a nation of America, we just were jolted again. We were shaken again in realizing that, hey, you know what? We have incredible value and we have such a responsibility to the rest of the world because this is your incredible love for us. So we really want to stand up together, hand in hand, and we really want to break through. And we don't want to let life slip by before us. We don't want to be reactive. We want to be true owners of this life and the next. And I pray, upholding the names of our true parents and in the names of Abraham and Mika Destel, of a blessed family, adieu.